another trend that's uh, progressing very, very rapidly within the CSP network. And it's the build out of a hierarchy of edge data centers. PJ, what approach should the CSPs take to address this build out? And will it be different for the edges? Will the very small edges be tackled differently than let's say the large or the medium sized edges? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, th I think that in some ways it, it, it's similar in many ways to what, what network building has been like for a long time. You know, we, we know there are different sizes of radio sites and, uh, and that kind of thing. So there, you know, there's some, there's some degree of, of continuum in, in size that, that exists as far as edge clouds are concerned that, that has some, some similarity to what's been there before. I think the difference here is, is uh, let's unpack, uh, unpack a few diff particular aspects of, of, you know, this reality that is emerging. Um, you know, one difference is that the combination of functions uh, is, is richer than has been present in the past at some of the locations. There, you know, there's a greater, in simple terms, we're putting little small, small little cloudlets, uh, you know, in, in a wide variety of, of sites that, you know, introduces some, you know, some new compute resources, um, you know, a new, a new way of thinking about um, IP networking adjacencies and, and the, you know, the composition of the domains, uh, all, you know, all those elements. So, so, so there, you know, th those are some of the, the, the new factors that speak to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, enhancing the, 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 the skills mix that you apply to actually being able to, to run such a, a dis, you know, sizable, sizable footprint. Um, to your point about different types of edges and just to shed some color on that, uh, you know, in our experience, um, there, there are, uh, you know, some, some sites that are a little bit like aggregation data centers or redesigned central offices that, you know, that, that are a little bit larger in size because they need to do more work. Um, and so you may have you know, you may have 60, 60, 80, 100 servers, three, four racks. Um, um, and, and, you know, so in that sense, it's, it's a little bit uh, simply more of a distributed function um, um, in the overall network context than has, has been there before. And, and then I think the, the, you know, the even more novel cases are, are ones where, um, you know, a small amount of network and application computing, much more compact footprint as you, you were describing, need, needs to be placed um, directly adjacent to, uh, you know, some other access network function and some other set of uh, operations, whether it's uh, embedded in the operator's network, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a remote access site, or if it's if it's a piece of functionality the operator is running on an enterprise customer's premise as part of a, a, a you know a, a a distributed cloud or distributed application offering, um, and so you, in the in the more in the more compact uh, and further distributed locations, there's there's an extra set of um, functionality to be thought about in terms of. Uh, integrating capabilities from the access part uh, to to the service delivery. Let's say it's a time a latency sensitive or a time sensitive operation, um, and there are other aspects of um, you know from a management plane function uh, perspective. What capabilities do you want to be done automatically at the site in case it's uh, in case there's an air gap or you know if it's become isolated for some reason. Um, Versus, you know, how do you still stay somewhat frugal in realizing the size of the footprint and keep certain functions a little bit more centralized, uh, uh, whether it's from a, you know, an analytics perspective or a configuration management point of view and so forth. So, um, so in terms of uh, what's what's needed from you know from a CSP point of view, I. I think it's very important to model based on, you know, which which size profile do you fit into, and you can define those in terms of server count and and uh, 
even even power draw uh, for that matter um, uh, and then you know build a functional profile that's a combination of this adjacency of domains with what you want the management operational model to look like and tying it back to what we were talking about before you can pretty straightforwardly see the value of a consistent operational model um, in terms of things like uh, instantiating a configuration um, or, uh, you know, evaluating state uh, in, in these locations, because at the end of the day, they're all part of a distributed CSP cloud. Um, and so you kind of have to architect that to, you know, to meet the operations goals that, that are being achieved. But, you know, that's, those are some of the essentials that we see as, as critical in figuring out how to approach the edge. Yeah, I think uh, my my main thought was one you you touched on, PJ, around where does the point of control live for these edge clusters, and certainly building products to try and solve for this. This is one of those fundamental things you need to decide on, because at the end of the day, you you have constrained compute resources at these locations. So yeah, doing things like analytics is uh, is potentially challenging. It can't even get to the point where doing things like a closed loop for an intent can potentially be too burdensome for that edge, loca uh, that edge location. But yeah, to your point, when you do have air gaps, like do you want the, uh, the ability for that cluster to say scale a workload, for example, do you want that to be dependent on reachability to some central cluster? And obviously the answer is probably no. So then how do you design a, a source of truth where you potentially have, you know, a portion of the configuration, let's say the underlay configuration, bootstrapping, that kind of thing that's coming from some central location, but the kind of service delivery intents are coming from another function. And how do you get those two to live together cohesively and not step on each other's feet? So yeah, these are interesting problems more on the product side that, that we have to try and think about and solve for. I think uh, you, you made a good point around the fact that we're actually not, uh, uh, you know, building out a ton of locations isn't something that's necessarily new for service providers. I mean, uh, radio sites are an order of magnitude above this problem, right? So, so building out distributed infrastructure uh, is something CSPs have known how to do for a long time. I think potentially there's there's some uh, appetite for more kind of day zero automation, you know, automation of uh, indexes, allocating ASNs, IP addressing links, system addresses, those kinds of things. There's probably more of, uh, I mean, solutions exist out there, so this isn't a new space per se, but I, I can see there's kind of a more momentum behind standardizing some of the uh, the automation for build out, you know, what we typically call uh, day zero, bootstrapping the fabric, re-imaging devices, getting them, you know, addressed, interconnected, bringing up the control plane, all those good things that you have to do. And you have to do it kind of the first time you plug in the device. So I see some, some kind of push to, to make that automation better, make it easier to use, make it more scalable across locations. But again, we use spreadsheets and stuff for the, for these external RAN sites. And I mean, it worked, right. You had a human there, but it did work. So I think, uh, the more interesting part for me is, uh, yeah, that whole split control and where does the operational interaction live? Could you talk to this cluster and actually get an operational view? Do you need to talk back to a single, like a, a central point and get a view there? These are all things that I, uh, I, I think are interesting. They keep me up at night, I will say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I think, I mean, I think one of the things that is inescapable in this, in this, you know, sort of transition or this, this, this development is that you know there there's an extension or an expansion of the of the operator's responsibility or for real you know live working footprint uh especially when you get to you know some sort of managed uh, enterprise offering um that you know might might combine assets from you know a very wide range of parties um and so the you know the the, the whole uh process of of capturing and instantiating intent in this variety of footprints, and then figuring out how to monitor it, so that you know if uh, if it's important for you know an, an energy company or a healthcare company's uh, uh, you know momentary operational need, you have a way of of filtering so that 
you know, you can say, here's where, here's, here's what we've done on our part. Um, uh, and here's where we think it, 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 you know, it flows over to, you know, to another portion of the operation. So, it, it, you know, it just, it just kind of, on the one hand, it expands the opportunity. Um, and on the other hand, it, it requires, uh, you know, a, a more rounded out view of what, what's actually, you know, what are all the things that are happening at the remote site that, yeah. you know, that we have to factor into the operation as we describe. Mm -hmm. 